Hi there, welcome to my video. I'm Alex and I'm the Wandering Englishman. Today you find me in the south of France. I'm about 66 kilometers south of Toulouse and roughly 100 kilometers from the little country of Andorra. Now generally in the south of France, especially in the southwest of the south of France, the land is usually a mix of vineyards, farmland, rural and urban centers. But today, I find myself in a unique place where bamboo can be found in an array of diversity. One man's fascination with bamboo has turned it into a small enterprise, which is now a tourist attraction. And today, we visit Le Parc au Bamboo. I think I'm saying that right. Basically, in English, it's the bamboo park. Now, this green setting which you're seeing me walk through, surrounded by bamboo plants, is set by the banks of a beautiful little river called Lier, which you'll see in a moment. It's set over five hectares, and this place was established way back in 2006. When I say way back, that's not actually that long ago, but enough time for the bamboo forest to grow, and, and apparently there's more than 200 species of bamboo can be found in this tranquil garden settings. Although, I could be slightly mistaken, that may, that may be 200 species of plants, but the majority of the plants that you, we will be seeing today are bamboo species. But, it has to be noted, as you, as you watch this video with me, you'll find many, many different beautiful flowers and plants scattered around the beautiful, tranquil settings. Now, I'm not sure what it is about bamboo, but I found myself compelled to visit this place as soon as I heard about it. One, it's slightly out of place for where it is, because obviously, as we know, bamboo is usually found in Asia, not France. So here I am in the bamboo forest. It's a little museum about bamboo. I'm not sure if it's a museum, but it's certainly a, it's a garden. Maybe the bamboo garden is probably the best way to describe it. I'm gonna head down towards the river here, but you can see this amazing bamboo. But you can imagine in the old days, if you're back in Asia, trying to see through this sort of thickness in bamboo. And this isn't actually that thick. If you were to go to a, a completely natural bamboo forest, the bamboo will be even closer together and you possibly wouldn't even be able to squeeze through. But this is sort of a, is very tastefully done. And it allows you to see, well, at least it allows Europeans to see what an Asian forest is like in southwestern France. Oh, this is, uh, it's rather nice, isn't it? Yeah. All the little baby fish. Where are the fish? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. wonder, wonder what they are? Well, miniature whatever's in the big river, but they stay on the edges because the big fish can't get to them. And they eat the algae and the stones. Right. Well, as I take in the natural beauty and ponder what life is like for a little fish in this uh, beautiful river, uh, it has to be noted that this part of France has many, many little rivers like this flowing all the way through it. Perfect places for a summer day just because the water allows a little bit of cooling. But obviously, being by the river, you are the peril of the elements of nature. But the reality is, if you compare this to the Mosquito Coast in Honduras, there's very little in terms of bugs that will bother you. It's just very beautiful, very tranquil. And as you can see, there are people just chilling out there. And rather than taking in the bamboo forest, which is yet to come, you'll see a lot more in the coming footage of some even more amazing bamboo. For a moment, I wanted to take in how beautiful this little river is. In the making of this video, I tried my best to educate myself a little bit more on bamboo. So rather than not to disclose that, I figured I may as well bring some of that knowledge to the table. And hopefully, over the course of this video, we can learn a little bit about bamboo.
Now the origin of the word bamboo is uncertain, but it probably comes from the Dutch or Portuguese language, which originally borrowed it from the Malay of Kannada. I have no idea how the Kannada and bamboo came to exist, but they reckon it was Dutch and Portuguese in origin. I think if you look at the Chinese symbol for bamboo, it looks mistakenly very similar to growing bamboo. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I think I remember seeing when I was walking around this park. Now bamboos are evergreen perennial flowering plants. In bamboo, like other grasses, because effectively that's what bamboo is, it's kind of like a grass rather than a tree. It has the internodal regions of a stem that are usually hollow. Vascular bundles in the cross section are scattered throughout the stem instead of a syndrical arrangement that you would get in a tree. Some bamboos are some of the fastest growing plants in the world, so what you could say, the bamboo is like the cheetah of the plant kingdom. It is unique. A certain species of bamboo can grow up to 910 millimeters every day. That's 36 inches a day, which is effectively a rate of almost 40 millimeters an hour, about half an inch an hour which translates to about one millimeter in growth every 90 seconds. Which is insane because you could effectively be sat there watching the bamboo grow at this phenomenal rate and potentially watching a forest grow up around you. I think could be kind of scary if you wake, if you go to sleep one day and uh, suddenly there's all this bamboo growing up around you and suddenly you're going to have, have to hack yourself out. Well, this is what they eat, this stuff. Obviously the diet of the great panda. Because bamboo grows so rapidly and it has such a high tolerance to marginal land, bamboo is an amazing candidate for afforestation. Carbon sequestration, which effectively means sucking carbon out of the atmosphere, and because of this is, for you environmentalists, a great plant for climate change mitigation because it's doing a phenomenal job of sucking that carbon out of the atmosphere and basically oxidizing the air which is obviously imperative for life as we know it. Bamboo actually has a very notable and economic cultural significance in South Asia, Southeast Asia and East Asia. It's been used in building materials, as a food source and as a versatile raw product. Anyone will have noted Bamboo makes an amazing natural composite material with a high strength to weight ratio, useful for all types of structures. Bamboo's strength to weight ratio is similar to that of timber and its strength is generally similar to that of a strong softwood or hardwood timber. Not to be underestimated, basically. One of the fascinating things about bamboo is the um, history associated with bamboo. To some cultures, bamboo is of real significance. For example, several Asian cultures, including that of the Andaman Islands, which is located where the Bay of Bengal is, believe humanity emerged from a bamboo stem. Now, in Filipino mythology, one of the more famous creation accounts tells of the first man, Malacus, meaning strong, and the first woman, Maganda, meaning beautiful. Now, each emerged from one half of a split bamboo stem on the island formed after the battle between the sky and the ocean. I kind of like that. I like that a lot. In Malaysia, a similar story includes a man who dreams of a beautiful woman while sleeping under a bamboo plant. He wakes up, breaks the bamboo stem, and then discovering the woman inside. It's kind of like their Adam and Eve story. And instead of the rib in the Adam and Eve story creating the woman, the... Uh, bamboo in Malaysia creates the woman. The Japanese folktale, the tale of the bamboo cutter, Takatori Mongatari, tells of a princess from the moon emerging from a shiny bamboo section. And even going to Hawaii, Hawaiian bamboo is known as Kanola, or the body form of the Polynesian creator god Kane. He was considered the highest of the four major Hawaiian deities along with Kinela, Ku, and Lono. He represented the god of procreation and was worshipped as the ancestor of chiefs and commoners. 
Kene is the creator who gives life associated with the dawn, the sun, and the sky. So a powerful deity. In many, many other societies in Asia, bamboo is linked to impressive individuals. If you're interested in further reading, I'd like to direct you to my blog on thewanderingenglishman.com and I give a little bit more insight in, into some of these uh, legends that have come from bamboo. So just walking around this park, it's a nice park. There's, a, there's quite a few families around here. I seem to have lost my father who I'm with today. You walk around and take it all in and uh, just learn a little bit about bamboo, which is pretty nice. And the, the river, I think it's hers, is, flows right next to it, which is what you just saw. Beautiful river, um, lots of little fish in the river. It's too small to eat. I saw one or two bigger ones, very nice. There's the river down there. Seems like there's a pump house in that direction. Or maybe a factory, I'm not sure. So as mentioned earlier, bamboo has a number of uses. Culinary uses, it can be eaten. You can buy bamboo in cans, I'm sure you've seen that, and I'm sure you've had that. But it can be eaten in various ways. If you eat too much bamboo, you can get poisoned and you'd have a very upset stomach. Potentially worse, actually as you probably may have in your kitchen. A lot of the objects in your kitchen in certain parts of the world are made of bamboo. Um, I'm sure you may even have bamboo chopsticks and cooking utensils. Bamboo has been used as a fuel as well, although not very environmentally sound. Uh, bamboo charcoal is often used in China and back in the day in, in old Japan. Where in Europe we used to use a quill, Whereas in Asia, they would write with a bamboo writing pen. It would be dipped in ink and, you know, made to write. There is something quite magical about bamboo, I think. Reminds me of all the kung fu movies. Oh. But also, the nice thing about bamboo a little bit similar to how the Egyptians put, used papyrus, which is reeds, to be able to write their sort of hieroglyphics on. In ancient Asian culture, they would use bamboo sort of pulpified or sort of spread out, which I think you can pulpify bamboo. They would use not only the bamboo pen to write upon that, but they would then use the bamboo itself as, a, as the writing paper. Even today, there are factories that sort of pulpify bamboo and turn it into writing paper. So in incredibly diverse material, even to the extent that you can, it's not great, but you can get bamboo fabrics. Not quite as good as hemp, for example, but I have seen bamboo shirts, bamboo pants, socks. It just means it's a very versatile, incredibly versatile plant. There's a lady over there um, meditating. I won't disturb her. Why not? A great place to do a bit of meditation. In a way, this is kind of perfect for the socialist distancing because it sort of sets you on a route where you can avoid people. Everyone's sort of roughly going in the same direction. It's incredibly peaceful. This is the southwestern countryside. Obviously here is the border and that's your typical countryside over there. This is uh, what you see in all this surrounding area, trees and grassland. But obviously here is the park. This is um, very typical of what I've been seeing in the countryside going to and from the cities that you've seen in my recent videos. Thankfully, humans haven't invaded a lot of southwestern France yet. Sadly, it will happen if we don't stem the tidal wave that is pouring into Europe right now. Look at this. There's some very beautiful trees. In a way, this little bit of the air 
I mean, I hate to say it, but this little bit actually reminds me of Hyde Park. Hyde Park in London. Hyde Park obviously doesn't have all the bamboo trees that we saw earlier, and we probably will see again as I head back in there. But this sort of a little area. But it could be anywhere in Europe, really. You know, manicured grass, beautiful trees, beautiful shrubs. It's very peaceful, apart from the, the faint sound of a pump station or a factory in the distance. Of course, um, to most Asian cultures, uh, for many hundreds if not thousands of years, bamboo was uh, used in construction. Less so today. I think in China, when they're building the modern day skyscrapers, bamboo has been banned. But if you go to Hong Kong, which I'm sure many of you have, have been to before, you'll note that many of these scaffolding you'll see against Hong Kong buildings, which I think is amazing, personally. Uh, but obviously you'll see houses made of bamboo on beaches, beach huts made of bamboo. Uh, you'll see various things, you know, like fountains, gates, gutters, all made of bamboo and crafted into something quite beautiful. One of the things that really did shape Asian civilization back in the day was the fact that bamboo was often used as a weapon. And you can see why, because obviously it's a long, long straight stick, and even an amateur could craft a weapon out of a bamboo stick. However, some of the more famous weapons created with bamboo is the bamboo staff, it's often used in many Asian martial arts. I think, I think there's one that's called a stave. I'm sure many of you will know the Japanese martial arts of Kendo. Well, that sword that they use is called a shinai, and that is made of bamboo. There's many other martial arts. I'm pretty sure that we're missing some. I think there's a martial art called Kyodo, which uses arrows made of bamboo. And let me think. There's another one where there's um, some of the early gunpowder weapons invented by the Chinese and the Japanese were effectively guns made of bamboo. And of course, bamboo was frequently used in the forests for booby traps and also for keeping prisoners captured. If you've ever seen the bridge over the River Kwai, you'll see that the prisoners were kept in bamboo crates and bamboo, um, effectively bamboo bars would keep them in prison. Bamboo has been used for torture over the years, sadly, but on a lighter note, we have to realize that Bamboo has created so many amazing musical instruments. Uh, my personal favorite, usually made with a traditional eucalyptus wood, but actually sounds better with bamboo, is the Australian didgeridoo. Bamboo has also been used in the manufacture of guitars, ukuleles, yeah, you name it. And there's flutes and recorders made of bamboo. I'm sure in the comments you'll probably remind me of a few others made of bamboo. Ah, one of the other things, obviously, a lot of furniture, and that's still very prolific today, is made of bamboo. Especially if you go to, you know, if you go to an exotic holiday resort, you'll pretty much find that tables and chairs are still made of bamboo. And you know what? They're very, very comfortable, especially if done correctly. What a wonderful material, what a wonderful plant. And what a wonderful place. I, um, I hope that maybe I've just given you some insights into the park of bamboo, Lord Lee Park of Bamboo. If you're ever in the region, I wasn't sponsored by these guys, but I do recommend visiting. They have no idea that I've made this video. Um, but if they get to watch this video, hopefully they leave a comment below and let me know. And also, if you like this video, leave a comment below and let me know. Oh, it's a maze, okay. So it goes through here. <laughs> Do you want to go in? Yeah, why not? Through the maze. Jesus.
thankfully it's not like a, an English maze where you get stuck because there are multiple exits it seems. I don't know if you're supposed to be finding the, uh, the centre. But it kind of gives you an idea of what it used to be like. You know, if you're trying to navigate sort of untouched land, you know, back when humans were just a few hundred thousand, a few million on the planet, this would, is what it would be like. Yeah, it's been a mission to cut through. I'm trying to get places. slightly disorientated. Which direction do you go? I can hear the river that way. So I'm gonna head this way I think. All that way. While I've got this peaceful time with you, I do want to thank everyone that has written to me recently. The um, emails I received after the cancelled video were very heartening. It deflected from the abuse that I got from those on the left that when they found the post on Facebook or Twitter, they thought it was appropriate to attack me further. But those that have sent in support via Ko-fi, via simple emails, via just leaving comments on the YouTube videos. I really have honestly appreciated every single one of those messages. So I just want to thank you for that. Oh, that's a fat one, yeah, right. If you do like this content, uh, do give it a share, do leave a comment, let me know. That's a proper one. That was the park of the bamboo, about seven and a half euros roughly to get in. Give or take a few ten cents or so here or there. It was very, very nice. I, I enjoyed walking around with my father and uh, very relaxing. As you can see, families here. Most of the time, you, you felt like you were alone because it was very spread out. However, there were the odd bottleneck here and there where you'd see one or two people. And obviously at the end here, this is the end of the park where people are obviously gathering just before they set out or they've just finished, you start seeing people again. Wonderful if, you've, um, if you're a fan of bamboo or just nature in itself, you know, worth checking out. In the southwest of France, the location is here. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.